Montreal, someone once said, is like a happy shout of wonderment. You're downtown on St. Catherine Street on a balmy summer night. It may look like any other large Canadian city on a summer night, but somehow you wonder at something that's in the air in this ordinary-looking big city scene. You're a prairie farmer or a New Yorker on a visit, and it surprises you to discover that next to Paris, Montreal is the largest French-speaking city in the world. Almost half the people speak both French and English. Papers right here. Hometown papers, right here. Paper, paper, sir. Extra, extra. Get him right here. Hometown papers here. Paper, Stop paper. Captain Dumont, I'm going to report to the post for 10 Where's Dominion Square? Dominion Square? Yeah. Walk along this street. Take the third turn yeah. on your right. Then the first turn on your yeah. left. It's right there. Thank you. You're welcome. I want to get out of the way, please. Move in front, please. How far do you go? To Maisonneuve. Against skyscraper and honking horn, you see relics of an ancient and stirring history. Maisonneuve. years ago, when Rembrandt was painting his masterpieces and the King of England was about to lose his head, Maisonneuve and 43 settlers were battling a wilderness and the savage Iroquois to found a city. It was then predicted of Montreal, you are as a grain of mustard seed that shall rise and grow till its branches overshadow the earth. And the prediction came true. Tonight, you're on the St. Lawrence. The harbor lights only suggest the 11 miles of piers and grain elevators of North America's second port. Crowded by warehouses and gleaming in the night is Notre Dame de Bon Secours, the Sailor's Church. The spires of Montreal remind you of the role the priest plays in the daily life of so many. You're Louis-Joseph Leblanc. You're one of a thousand night watchmen standing guard over factories that produce a billion dollars worth of goods a year. You're another watchman hurrying to answer a wrong number. You're a charwoman with two more floors to clean. You're on St. James Street. The prices are rising, but the ticker tape is silent. You discover that Montreal's true flavor is not found in the stately Sherbrooke Street or in the grand apartments on Mount Royal. It's in block after block of duplexes and triplexes with their outside corkscrew stairways. Here lives the cafe waiter, the machinist, the typist, and a million more Montrealers. By day, Colette works with 3,000 other girls in a cigarette factory. But now, with her hair just right, she's ready for her date. Colette is sometimes lonely away from her family. She's one of many who left the villages and farms of Quebec to seek work in Montreal. Her French is still the French of old Normandy, carried down from generation to generation. 
It's warm and colorful, and it's the only language she knows. Talking to people she works with, she's quickly learning to speak English. But tonight, she's the same as any other Canadian girl. She wants to get married. She's in love. Jacques, her boyfriend, also has ancestors who came from France. But to him, the language is almost foreign, for he was born and brought up in Dauphin, Manitoba. But with his few French words and her scant English, they manage. Every summer night, Colette sees Le Club de Croquet in action. Old cronies getting together to beat each other at a game in which everyone is an expert. Another way of forgetting the cares of the day is playing Le Jeu Canadien, Montreal's own version of checkers. Up and down the side streets, the buzz of talk filters through the night air. On St. Lawrence Boulevard, they see and scent the aroma of a little bit of Europe. Italian antipasto, Hungarian goulash, Romanian halushkis, little German sausages, onion pretzels, apple strudel, and more. The favorite dishes of a dozen countries whose sons and daughters came to share the new world. The hurdy-gurdy man grinds his music in front of the all-night movie. The street hawker peddles his wares. And the world passes him by. On the other side of town, up near Sherbrooke and Peel, you're stopped by a mob of people. It's Montreal's mayor on his way to an important civic function. A few blocks away, in the panelled rooms of the St. James, the McGill, the St. Denis clubs, the captains of industry, bank presidents, board directors, corporation lawyers discuss the ebb and flow of the nation's commerce. And Montreal's famous for another kind of club. and out, you find the city at play. Your name is Jack, and your girl's name is Colette. You live in Montreal, and you're out for an evening at Belmont Park. And all over the city, in La Fontaine Park, or à la Montagne, the night air is alive with the laughter and gaiety of a carnival mood. making its last run, and the wheels of fun are slowing to a stop. Over quiet roads where once two empires fought, carefree Montrealers are going home. Tomorrow has already begun. The morning editions are going to press in two languages. Bonsoir, Montreal. A bientôt.